Hey, we're back at the top again today on the road to Pokemon Sun and Moon, and we are under a month to go until these games are out. But hang on, let's slow down as we go back, look over a type, and see what Generation 7 can do to improve on it. This is the 17th episode in the series, so if you haven't seen any of the others, you must have been scared. Today's type is still not the dark type. Don't worry, it'll be next. It's actually the ghost type, however. Time to see how Pokemon Sun and Moon could improve this type. Alright, alright, let me just get these out of the way real quick. We'll start with the fact that there are little to no physically attacking ghosts. Now I know that there are a few, none of them are actually highly tiered though. If you don't like Smogon, skip ahead a few, kinda maybe 15 seconds. In OU and UU there are only three ghosts, all of them are not really physical attackers. Gengar is mainly special, and Regular and Mega Sableye are more defensive and supportive. And then you got Chandler. He spits hot fire, but stays on the other side of the field. Let's hope the ghost Pokemon we get in Sun and Moon are get up close and personal. Let's hope they slap us in the face. Wait, that, that, that's, that, that sounds kind of strange. Looks like we're getting the most recycled issues here as Speed once again rears its ugly head. I know we have things like Gengar, Frostlass, and Miss Magius, but once again, check the tiers. I don't know why ghosts aren't fast enough. I actually don't really know what role they're supposed to have. Ghosts are all over the place. They don't seem to have a niche. They have the strong special attackers, the, the support, and the defenses, but barely any fast attackers and speedy ghosts. Someone give Danny Phantom a call. He might be able to help. This is the biggest tragedy. You've heard the complaint that the dark types suffer from no ultimate attack, right? By ultimate attack, I do mean 100 power or more. And I'm not talking about Z-moves since we've never experienced them. At least, not yet. See, dark types suffer from this problem where they have no attack that exceeds 100 base power. That's not a signature move, of course. And it's well known that this problem exists. But did you know it's also a problem with the ghost type as well? Shadow Force is the only move over 100 base power, but that's Giratina's special move. Well, we'll definitely fix it later, but let's delve into this topic some more. I referenced there being no physical presence with ghost types earlier, and this is probably why. Shadow Claw is the strongest physical ghost attack at 70 base power. Now you see why everyone rolls with Gengar, and not just because of that smile. I just want to preface this next section by saying I will not be talking about the data mine leaks. My channel will be a safe haven to talk about Sun and Moon without being spoiled. Just like most people, I'm trying to go in as blind as possible. So if you've already seen the leaks and I pick a Mega or a Lolan form that's not actually in the game, please do not rip me a new one because I don't know what the leaks had. Now moving on, we have the only ghost type in the game rather in Generation 1, Gengar, as if we didn't talk about this Pokemon enough already. So, how did Alola affect Gengar? My best guess is that it had to avoid the constant sunshine of the islands. Since it liked the shadows, it became very scarce, so it retreated into more of an Alolan object. As you can see here, this design from Peppa, I believe, that's how you pronounce that, from Reddit. It becomes a ghost grass type, give it cursed body, harvest, and heat proof, and you'll know this Tiki would be rolling through battles. Well, more like standing through battles, but you get what I mean. So a little issue with the Mega Pokemon for the Ghost type. I can't actually show this concept, but a design by Poka Luca of DeviantArt will be in the description below. I'll be describing it instead! It is Mega Cofagrigus, and he takes on a gimmick that only one Pokemon has currently. Stance change! How might this be possible? By coming out of the coffin and getting up close and personal. That's how! This might be broken if not even more broken than Aegislash, but since when has Game Freak cared about balance, huh? So we have two different stats. It's Coffin Form and Feral Form. It's Coffin Form though is much more defensive and slower, while in Feral Form it's a lot faster and stronger offensively, while it is very frail on the other hand. There's a reason why no one wakes up the Feral, because he will show no mercy! We once again have three attacks to go over from all three categories. We'll start with the physical move Shadow Storm, where the user sends a storm of shadows to attack the opponent head on. This attack has a base power of 100 and will make you think twice before you step on someone else's shadow. The special move is Soul Burn, where the user creates a flame, which damages the soul of the user by burning it. 
This attack has a base power of 95 and a 20% chance to burn. Quite spooky for this time of year, huh? And the last and final move, that was a redundant statement, but it's the status move Fog Wall, where the user creates a wall of fog. This is a move that creates the fog weather effect that was in Generation 4. You know how fun that would be in competitive at Return to the Game. You would not want to miss it. Get your popcorn ready for the concepts, as this is the second to last time we do this specific section. Like that foreshadow? Do you like that pun? Well, we're not making puns. We're looking at the type chart where it shows that the ghost type has not been paired with the normal type, the fighting type, the rock type, the psychic type, other than Hoopa, the dragon type, other than Giratina, and the fairy type. Of course, Mimikyu is not available yet. We'll see if we can fit in one of these types into the concepts we have today. Let's hope. But with that, we have the first concept. This bonefish concept designed by K Kakiri, I believe that's how you pronounce it, of a DeviantArt. This thing is very interesting as a ghost water type, and because this type of concept is seen left and right. However, let's see how well its stats hold up. I could see this thing being more of a tank with high HP and decent defenses, while its attack stats are okay as well. The moves I could see it using would be Shadow Ball, Hydro Pump, Bone Club, and Will O' Wisp. Insert bone pun here. I can't really think of one. I'm watching this badly offensive Sunday night football game to think of one as I type this script. I'm breaking the fourth wall here. And the last concept is a surprisingly not dragon type lizard concept designed by Blue Hearts of DeviantArt. It is a ghost poison type, and unlike Gengar, it looks pretty physical. Let's get a look at the stats, and like I mentioned, I believe it looks more physical, along with some decent bulk and speed, and this thing looks to be a formidable foe to go up against. From the looks of things, I think this Pokemon should get access to the moves Shadow Claw, Gunk Shot, Dragon Claw, and Dragon Dance. I don't know how to feel about this though. Why? <sighs> well... I don't know how to feel right now. I just don't know how to end this video. Ah! Oh, oh, if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave your suggestions on how to improve the ghost type below. And if you want to join me on the road to Pokemon Sun and Moon, like this video, and in the comment section below, subscribe. Also, delete the gym, Facebook up, and hit your lawyer. The Seahawks just tied, and I don't know what to do with my hands. I do know, though, after the dark type, this won't be the end of this series. Ooh, foreshadowing. Oh, do you like that pun again? I do, because that is how I do what. I just wanted to record one episode, not hurt my elbow in front of the Pokemon God himself. Thank you, Beyonce. But of course, it's charging me. Why would you have a grin on your face?